Now we have the inferior function, which they call time. So it's naturally disposed towards taking decisive action in the present. They tend to be impatient and have difficulty looking far ahead to see the consequences of their actions. And they may be headstrong and act without foresight, jumping into fray without knowing the likely outcome and hitting a brick wall. Similarly, they may have difficulty remembering and adequately learning from their past mistakes, being more inclined to base their actions purely on what seems to be the circumstances of the moment. For this reason, they tend to achieve success. Uh, this is usually through impulsive initiative taking, surveying the immediate surroundings to gain tactical advantages. I like how they, they're still talking about your strengths. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rather, <Thank you. laughs> they're like, saying, this is actually just a good thing anyway. <laughs> yeah. Rather than thinking ahead or developing a coherent strategy. However, they tend to appreciate the counsel of a select few who they tend Oh, why don't we start with that first? So uh, what's your take on that? Oh, it's so true. You know, the um, I always say that I kind of, I feel lucky because I feel like I kind of stumble into success in life without having any sort of goal about it. Mm-hmm. And I, but I, what I realized is it's because I put myself out there, right? you know, and that's, um, I don't necessarily have a plan. It's just like, if I'm wanting to do well in something, I just immerse myself into it. And right. I think that that's something that, it is a good thing about SEs and that is where kind of ignoring NI can actually be helpful as they're mm-hmm. saying here is like, you know, I'm just going to put myself out there and what will happen will happen. Right. And having kind of an optimistic attitude about that. I've only been doing this typology stuff for like two years now, mm-hmm. you know, but um, you know, I've made it to panels and stuff just cause like I've been talking to people. I leave comments, you know, it's like, I don't, even though I haven't, fully learned everything yet um, yeah you just like find some I've, small like, thing to do to, to just get just to yeah. get into it yeah right and i'll just like consistently leave comments and interact with people and get mm-hmm. to know people and um you know and i feel like that is a strength mm-hmm. but of course the negative side to that is like well what are you doing this for <laughs> you know like uh, if you don't have a goal in mind and you're doing that you can find yourself like do i actually really care about this subject or do I, am I just addicted to, you know, the, the dopamine, you know, of like the positivity that I get from it. And that is something I found myself for sure without foresight, jumping into things mm-hmm. and then being like, wow, I don't even care about this. What am I doing? Hmm. Um, and, so and, and, and in, uh, I do care about typology though. Well, uh, what do you notice? Uh, when do you notice like uh, the NI starts to show up then? And I, for me, and, and this is kind of cliche, and it's something that you hear a lot about when you hear about SE DOMs, but it is paranoia. It's like, uh, oh, I'm not, you know, like, I don't have any sort of plan here. Like, mm-hmm. it's, um, you know, nobody really, nobody's going to care about all these things. What's the point? Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, I'm super optimistic. I, that's just three fourths full, not even half full in my life most of the mm-hmm. time is how I see things. But then when I get to that other one fourth, it feels super empty. Hmm. You know, like it feels like, you know, like it's, uh, this is where I think NI and FI kind of interact together for me in a negative way. It's like, Hmm. it's like, why, why are you even, what's the point of all this? No one cares, you know, like no one cares about these hobbies you have. Like there's, there's no goal or like path you're taking in life. You're just aimlessly, serving your own pleasures and not leaving a legacy, you know, all those things. It's just calling out to like this deeper sense of purpose behind things. Yes. Right. And, you know, I, it can be a good thing when it happens because it gets me to focus on what matters, but what's hard is that it can lead to some self-loathing if I haven't put in the necessary work to, um, you know, to make sure that my actions align with who I am. So if my actions are aligning with who I am and I have those NI moments, I'm like, no, but I'm doing the right things, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm proud of what I'm doing and I can come out of it well. But if I've been really impulsive and if I have been, you know, really focusing on SE and kind of ignoring the other stuff, then yeah, it can lead to some really negative sense of self. Yeah. Uh, on, on the flip side of that, just to let you know, just like how you were talking about how mm-hmm. um, your two weakest functions here are intuition and... Um, introvert feeling. So for me, it's yeah, uh, expert, uh, expert thinking, expert sen- sensing. 
And so for right. me, like my, my strongest would be introvert feeling, introvert intuitions, so like the one that you mentioned that they come together. Right. right? So I could kind of yeah. like spend a lot, I, I kind of gain a lot of clarity over like what I want out of life and like that sense of like purpose behind it. And then I just wait and yeah. <laughs> like 10 years later, it's like, right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I should do something about that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Whereas I just jump, I just jump into the pool and not realizing the pool is empty, you know? And that's, uh, <laughs> and then I go thump and I'm like, oh, crap. should have checked for water. <laughs> yeah. Whereas you're just sitting on the diving board, not doing anything. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I get it. Like it's, um, you, you know, know that 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 uh, actually literally happened. I, I was like, uh, I got, I, I did, I did. No, I sat on it, but diving boat board. I was like, I was, I was like really scared. I did eventually jump. I was like, I was like, but that reminds me, please, uh, dear Kristen, she did a, a skit and with the INFP, the INFP was um, imagining going to the beach with um, her friends or something along the lines. And it yes. is, he was just like looking at a painting and, she, and someone asked her, do you want to go to the beach? She's like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's funny. I can totally picture that. Let's go to, oh, oh. so we still have more in terms of NI here. Um, yep. However, they appreciate the accounts of a select few who, who they know tend to be right about such things. Uh, they may benefit greatly from foresight of others and a focus on greater purposes and goals uh, brings them a sense of meaning to their ESFP erratic hyperactivity, making it more clear as to why they should act in the first place. Although prone to yeah. pugnacity, they will har harbor a curious respect for those who are not afraid to say uh, what they think think the latest um how the latest scheme may be stupid and, and in disaster um to such people uh ESPs may return again and again utilizing such wisdoms to advise their actions and better guide what they do along uh, a path of predicted success yeah that you know it's interesting like that's one reason i'm really glad i'm married to who i'm married to because mm -hmm. um you know Ashley will call me out on things like, you know, I tend to get excited about something and then abandon it because I don't see a purpose of it. Mm -hmm, and right. she'll notice like, and I think her any is really good at being like, well, here are some of the things that could happen if you do this. And here's some mm -hmm. things you've done before. And like you the know, potential that NESI is nice for me. Right. And it's mm -hmm. like, Hey, this is the kind of thing that you tend to do when you're struggling, you know, or, or she'll support me and be like, Hey, no, this is exactly like usually what leads you to good places. Um, and I'd say the same thing with my ENTJ father, like he's really good at that too, for me, you know, he can kind of call me out on things, be like, well, why are you doing it? What's the point? You know, like, how are you going to do it? You know, the how kind of things in people, I really appreciate them. Cause it's like, I don't, sometimes I don't think about the how, how or the why I just think about the what, you know, right. <laughs> I need some of those how and why people in my life for sure. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and this made me think about because you, you are making that book right now that I I bet like probably like mm -hmm. along the process that like Joyce's introverted intuition shows up in a way that's helpful to you. Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, like if we're hitting a slower period where we're not making as much progress, you know, I can kind of start to find myself detaching a little bit mm -hmm. and being like, ah, well, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and she's great about like, no, we're staying the course. Like we're mm -hmm. doing so well. Look how look, the progress we've made and you know, like she really reaffirms me in that way, um, mm. which is really helpful because I can tend to abandon ship if uh, if I'm not seeing immediacy. So, right. yeah, no, it's nice to have those types of people in my life for sure. Great. Okay, so now we're yeah. on to pragmatism, which is extra thinking. So, uh, yep. for for your type, the key to success is knowledge. And many will place great emphasis on learning from one's mistakes and self-improvement so that they can get better tackle future obstacles. Um, they want to be able to see themselves as knowledgeable and maybe eager to share whatever they may have learned. When they try to solve any problem, they may learn to try out a few options until something shows a sign of working, at which point they'll push ahead at full pace. Um, Okay, so we could uh, start with this. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, um, I'm not afraid to fail. And I think that's, uh, 
you know, I think that that that's something that that helps here. It's like, mm-hmm. well, okay, this didn't work, but let's try this other thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that is where TE can be a nice thing because it's like you're just trying to find whatever works. It's you know, you're not taking it personally. Right. Um, you know, and that's true for most extroverted functions. If I'm reading it correctly, or if I've thought about it correctly, well, they, they, they have that sense of uh, objective objectivity to it, right? Yeah. So it's like, did it work? Did it not work? You know, mm-hmm. what I take personally is more the FI side of things when it's like, you know, anyways. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, this is something where, yeah, I agree with it for sure. Mm-hmm. Like it's, I can be a bit impatient with it. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, maybe I don't stick with one of them long enough. And that is more of the immaturity of my TE rather than mm-hmm. a TE dom, you know, where it's like, ah, this didn't work. Dang it. You know, try mm-hmm. something else. Whereas the reality is if I would have stuck with it a little bit longer, and mm-hmm. TI learned more about it, you know, yes. and really dove deeper into how and why it worked, I would do better. <laughs> you <Yes. know>? but, <laughs> right. um, it, so be it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's an area I struggle with. It's just kind of like um, sticking to a consistent approach that works over time. Like, yeah. Sometimes I find something that works and I don't know why I drop it. <laughs> it just, right. Yeah. It's like well, run, I just I, run out of energy for it. <laughs> and that for you, I'm sure part of that is your, uh, the placement of your SI as well. Right. Yes. And also extra intuition because mm-hmm. I can go like, oh, why don't I just go on to this new thing? Which right. I'm not sure it would, would work <laughs> yeah. at all, but it's like, it, it sounds, it's just right. like really fascinating to me. <laughs> right. um, yep. um, so however, some, sometimes their tendency to rush into things and cut corners may cause them to slip, leading to failure. Um, they're aware they do not process factual and practical information as well as others and want to improve themselves so they so as to minimize any incompetence on their part they look forward to winning people over through not only charm but also demonstrated intelligence and accumulated knowledge as such they can benefit from the occasional factual support and know how it would trust its source they will tend to work very hard at matters that interests them, cutting out distractions and disciplining themselves into learning the necessary material and applying it efficiently in the field. Similarly, in a debate scenario, they will combine their forceful tenacity with honed knowledge of the relevant facts, being sharp enough to provide a well-sourced evidence to come back to most critiques. You know, I this is one reason the more I've been learning about socionics, mm-hmm. the more I appreciate it. Because these are things that people wouldn't usually say about ESFP is like a focus mm-hmm. on facts. Um, whereas I've noticed that that tends to be the case. In fact, we're almost like obsessed with facts, mm-hmm. you know, to almost to a, a negative side. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't just do whatever we want. We do whatever we want within the realms of what's factual and what's right. accurate, mm-hmm. or at least what we see is accurate, right? Which is the TE accuracy. It's different than TI accuracy. Um yeah, so like when I read this and they say, or was it um, being sharp enough to provide a well source and evidence, come back to most critiques, that's true. The problem that we run into, of course, is when people try press harder on why we feel that way or <laughs> what about those facts is accurate, that's where it crumbles. Hmm. Because like I feel like I, I cast my net wide on facts, but not right. deep. Mm-hmm. So if someone cuts in deeper into what I believe, I'm like, uh, I don't know. That's a TI <laughs> you know, like, part. just what right? I've seen. Yeah. And that's something I really struggle with. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and that's why they mentioned their tendency to rush into things and cut corners causes them to slip. That's actually absolutely. It's like, I might be casting a wide net, but it's not mm-hmm. catching anything because right. it's too wide and it's not deep enough to actually get anything into that net. So that's what I have to watch out for. Hmm. Okay. Very, very interesting. So let's go mm-hmm. to um, senses, which is introverts sensing. So yeah. Um, so they t- talk about like in socioeconomics, ESPs would actually be uh, relatively strong at this. They just kind of um, they kind of uh, are opposed to it though. So ESPs they right, yeah. tend to be restless, ambitious individuals, often trying to satisfy their appetite for improvement and achievement. As such, there's little room for restful relaxation. They're characterized by almost hyperactive energy state and are unlikely to sit and enjoy their surroundings when they can be acting upon it. However, they tend to have a good eye for details they are looking for and can quickly cultivate the right look to maximize impact on their surroundings. 
understanding the importance of looking nice for a sense of personal pride and to have an appealing, inviting impact on others. They can make themselves look sensual and gracious, cultivating the right, <laughs> cultivating <laughs> the right aesthetic. It, just like with that sweater of yours right now. Oh and, yeah, look at this. I <laughs> very nice. It's a it's a Gap outlet. <laughs> very uh, very fancy. <laughs> <laughs> cultivating the right aesthetic for the occasion, doing so helps to sharpen the edge of their charm. Okay, we could start with so, that. So one that what sticks out to me, and this is something I've actually talked to my therapist about, mm -hmm. um, where it says we're characterized by an almost hyperactive energy state and are unlikely to sit enjoy their surroundings when they could be acting upon it. Mm -hmm. um, so a problem that I have is that, like, let's say uh, at late at night, I'm playing a video game. I'll also have a YouTube show going on at the same time. Yeah. It's like this overstimulation to be not within my own thoughts. It's like, I want to, I'm restless. It's like, I need to be learning this. I need to be doing that. And it's like, I don't have enough time, you right. know, like I actually have to go to sleep at some point. So I'll just do both at once, you know, and, while, uh, while sleeping, and <laughs> while sleeping, you know, I'll eventually fall asleep while doing it. And that's the problem. Like, mm -hmm. and this is where, um, you know, I do notice that this is a, a challenge for me it mm. is slowing down enough to be like, no, let's just really dedicate myself to this thing instead of just trying to conquer everything in the world, like trying to do everything I possibly can, learning all the information. It's like, chill, man, slow down. Like actually yeah. like learn the material. Don't just gather, 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 gather. Sometimes you have to slow down and make sense of what you've gathered. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's really interesting because I, I work as a psychotherapist and this is yeah. what all like my SC Dom clients, they bring up to me. Like they have all really? this like go, go, go energy and they can't like, um, and Chris, Kristen mentioned this before, like kind of like find that sense okay. of stillness that's needed. Yes. Yeah. Right. And that's something, you know, my therapist mentioned, she's like, whoa, because I, I brought that up. They're like, whoa, that's a red flag. Like what's going on there? <laughs> <You know? Right. laughs> I don't know what's going on there. I just do it. So, um, yeah. So that really stood out to me when I, when I read this earlier. Now looking nice. I don't, that, that part right there, it says understand the importance of looking nice. I don't agree with that personally, because I don't really value that. Like, I don't, I don't value the whole like etiquette and style and fashion and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I do want to, I do have like certain aesthetics I want to, to present right. most mm -hmm. of the time. Hmm. You know, I like, you wouldn't know it by what I'm wearing right now, but I like to have something bright, usually right. like either bright shoes or some kind mm -hmm. of like bright shirts or mm -hmm. something like that is usually what I like to present. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, this is something that like, so for me, I don't really, that's something that I've always kind of critiqued about how MBTI views SE at times, mm -hmm. especially ESFPs. They'll say things like, well, you're materialistic and you like nice things. It's like, no, mm -hmm. I don't, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I'm materialistic in the sense of I like having things, but right. not, they don't mm -hmm. have to be nice things. Right. You know, yeah. like mm -hmm. I like goodwill clothes are cheaper you know <laughs> like so anyways yeah yeah so this, this gives a like a very different kind of look to um so right and that's i was gonna say that that's something that i do like about this website though is that when they've mentioned something i disagreed with they often will throw in another little statement that provides an out you know because they said looking nice but then they also said cultivating the right aesthetic for the occasion that's not always nice you know right i wouldn't want to dress in a tuxedo to a, a dive bar you know like <laughs> there's it's not always about looking nice you know? <laughs> absolutely so um let's see where the where did i leave off erratic in their uh, erratic in their energy um, they may be inclined to rest when there's nothing else to do, but will jump into action when there's something they want. In such situations, enjoyment of the present situation is pushed out of mind as something else and becomes the object of their appetites. In pursuit of their ambitions, um, they tend to have a strong impact on the environment while largely ignoring its effect on overall peace and harmony. Similarly, their toughness allows them to gain Ignore pain when pushing unstoppably towards a goal. 
Although largely seeking to protect the needs of people they care for, they are likely to do this in a way that takes people out of their comfort zones, preferring to push and challenge people in a way that takes them close to but never over their limits. Yeah, so there's two things here which I really agreed with. Mm. Um, the first being uh, where it says their toughness allows them to ignore pain when pushing unstoppably towards a goal. Mm-hmm. So when I was in high school, um, I was on I was a basketball player mm-hmm. and a track athlete. And in basketball, I could play the whole game, no problem. Mm-hmm. You know, it didn't matter how tired I was. There was a ball. I was competitive. It was fun. But mm-hmm. before that, the season before that, I would do cross country to get in shape for basketball. Mm-hmm. And I felt every bit of pain because I had no goal. Mm-hmm. It was boring to me. I hated it. Mm-hmm. So like the entire run, I felt exhausted. Mm-hmm. You know, I was just like, oh, this is horrible. My body hurts. Like, you know, like I was a big, I was a big dude who was, you know, I was a disc thrower mm-hmm. who was in cross country to get in shape for basketball. So kind of a random combination of things. Right. So I, I, cause I felt like I had to do cross country. And so, because I felt like I had to do it right. rather than actually enjoying it, I really felt the pain, but basketball, I had so much fun. I didn't care. Yeah. It's really, really fascinating reading this. Um, mm-hmm. And then the other thing it's uh, where it says, preferring to push and challenge people in a way that it takes them close to, but never over their limits. I agree with that as well. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I, I don't feel the need. I never felt the need with either with my kids or with my loved ones mm-hmm. to challenge them to the point where they're visibly upset. Right. But I do want to challenge them to be the best versions of themselves that they can be mm-hmm. and not to be paralyzed by fear. Right. You know, it's like, come on, you know, go down this slide. It'll be a lot of fun. Watch me do it. And I'll do it. Be yeah. all goofy and my kids, you know, seeing their different reactions. But then when I notice that it's like bringing panic rather than just uncomfortable fear, I stop. I'm like, okay, that's all right. You don't have to do it. I right. just wanted to see if you wanted to, you know. Yes. Um, it, it kind of ties back to this point where you talk about introverted feeling. And it's called, uh, when you're kind of like assessing your relationship with others, you're um, able mm-hmm. to kind of like see where the invisible boundaries in the lines are. Right. And you right, yeah. and it's like not, um, not try to push too far across that. Right. Yeah. And it's seeking limits. And I do, I, you know, I will admit, I do push people that I care about to their limits, you mm-hmm. know, like that I do it. I, I can't deny that. Like I want, I want to see people try hard to be the best that they can be. Right. But mm-hmm. <laughs> not to the um, detriment of that, that FI, that relationship that I have with them right. um, or to the, emotional state like I would, that would kill me if i if i found out that i was being pushy with someone right right mm-hmm. um so let's go to okay so here's the last one's emotion mm-hmm. so this is where it talks about expert feeling so esfps yep. tend to be emotionally dynamic oozing a dominant charisma that they that could quickly win people over and indirectly pick up the mood and this tends to attract a lot of attention uh, and they tend to rarely go unnoticed. However, despite often enjoying their impact in the social scene, they do not care to play up in to the crowd or maintain the moods they create. Us- <laughs> uh, although usually very charming, this operates on a case-by-case basis, with them making a lot of allies from different situations, but also making enemies on occasion or agreeing to disagree. Um, in regards to publicity and, and common opinion, they can be fiercely independent and unafraid of drawing controversy if the matter is something they feel strongly about. So I guess this goes to point that extra feeling is very strong, but it's not necessarily uh, valued like like 100%. Yeah, I, totally. And this is something that um, I've been kind of racking my brain to figure out why this one, but not SI, hmm. is considered just as strong, mm-hmm. you know, cause I'm like, okay, so why would the, why would they consider FE to be stronger than SI? And I really thought of, I was thinking about it. And I still don't fully know the answer, but I would agree with what I'm reading here because, um, yeah, like the part about us not caring to play up to the crowd or maintain the moods we create, you know, mm-hmm. I'll do something just cause I think it's fun or funny, mm-hmm. but I don't feel an obligation to everyone to like be their jester or something, right? You know, it's like I'll throw in a joke now or there, 
here or there. But then I'm like, I'm totally cool to then just disappear in the background and do whatever I feel like doing. Right. You know, I don't feel this need to like entertain everybody. Um, I can, but I don't want to. Right. You know, I only want to if I want to. <laughs> you know, right. it's not something I feel obligated to do. Yeah. So that ties back to so the what are your introvert feeling. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to ask you, why do you think that the sixth function in MBTI or this the eighth function in socionics, why is it considered to be just almost as strong as your dominant? Like what, what's like the TI running there? It's almost, why is considered almost as strong as the dominant? Well, I think it's very yeah. apparent, like when I look at ENFPs and ESFPs, for example, that they're very, very lively and they're also like very mm-hmm. engaging and that there's behind that is a lot of that emotional dynamism, right. Um, that, mm-hmm. that takes place. And, um, so if you look at like, um, me, like INFPs or ISFPs, for example, it's, it's like very, very different from that. Like that's actually like a key right. difference. It's like, um, how much expert feeling can be seen. Right. Like, um, right. Yeah, you know, PC space, you just have that, that very lively kind of presence. And the way they also engage with others, too, is their extra feeling is actually very, like, very natural, right? They're- Do you think it's because it's the same, like, introverted, extroverted orientation as your dominant? So it's like, it makes sense that it would be, you know, mm-hmm. that it would be strong, because it's like, that's kind of the mode you're going into most of the time anyways. Yeah, so the idea is like yep. a- extroverts, they're extroverts, so that they kind of push for yeah. their extrovert functions more. And I think it's, um, right. it also brings balance to the system too. So you, we think of ESAPs as, as being perceiving types, but they're actually equally judging types. And then the judging aspect is mm-hmm. the other side of them, which is the extrovert feeling. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. That's, you know, th- I think that socionics has a lot to offer to the MBTI right. community. Right. Um, you know, and I, bef- this is something that I kind of knew a little bit beforehand, but like really diving into it recently, mm-hmm. I've been really swayed by a lot of it, by a lot of how they're describing things, which I wasn't honestly didn't feel that way before right. because mm-hmm. I was getting hung up on the, you know, yes, yeah, so, or the SEEs are like to conquer their women. <laughs> 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 you know, like that. I couldn't see the rest of this. I couldn't see the forest for the trees or whatever the phrase is there. Um, but yeah, that's um, it, very interesting. Yeah. I also like, so a lot of things that get attributed to introvert feeling are, are really extrovert feeling kinds of things. Like if you could put in into oh, consideration all eight of the functions. So for instance, this explains why ESAPs and ENAPs, they're they're much more expressive of it, they almost seem like more expressive of their introvert feeling. Like they're very yeah. passionate, like talking about what they like and what they dislike. Whereas like Ina piece and ice at piece can be kind of almost like appearing a bit much more reticent or like kind of like holding that back more. Right. Yeah. And that, is, that is fascinating. And this is something that through my research as Joyce, I've been working on things. I'm like, man, the ISFPs and INFPs are, you know, they may be feelers, but they don't come across as much right. as feelers at times, which is crazy when they have, you know, when I say feelers, I'm talking about the societal definition of feelers right, right, right. rather than the Jungian version of feelers, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's been really fascinating, just how off some of our societal definitions are when you compare them to the Jungian definitions. Right, Yeah. SCEs are motivated to express themselves sincerely, often with candor and even frightening pugnacity. Should they feel a pressure from others to conform? Although sensitive to others' needs, they're unlikely to flatter or excite others beyond a basic level of sincerity and will just likely provide harsh overblown t- a critique if they feel that is more justified. They're usually very observant of emotions used by others and will quickly call out ploys they feel are fake or manipulative. In addition, they may depend on changes in mood and how others react to them as a useful measure for their impact on the surroundings. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And this is where I can tell I'm not an FE dom, is that, that last sentence. Um, mm-hmm. Like, I actually need, I need to see some of those changes in mood. And I need right. some of that like objectivity of like, 
someone actually saying how they feel Mm -hmm. um, to see like the impact I've made. Like someone's not engaging with me or they're stonewalling me, right? Like they're not really giving much responses. Mm -hmm. I, I can't really tell what they're feeling and I'll go into a place of overanalyzing it um, Mm -hmm. or like thinking, Oh, I must've done something wrong or what, what's happening here. So you need, you need that emotional environment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't do well with people who don't really share much. Um, And so there's times where if someone is really introverted and won't, and just doesn't want to talk much, I can have a hard time connecting. Now that's not true for every introvert, you know, but there are, there are some people I know who are pretty introverted and that can be a real challenge for me. Um, Right. Because I can't really tell what they're thinking. Yeah. It's hard to get access to what their emotional state is or Right. And so even though I might be good with this, with Mm -hmm. FE, it's not a preferred function of mine, Yeah, you know, and it's Mm -hmm. like, I can, I could, for a while there, I was like, well, maybe I'm in ESE and I was reading more about the ESE is on this version. I was like, no, you know, no, I'm not like, it's, you know, I can see that I do have strong FE, but it's not like an FE DOM. Right. You know, like I, I'm not like a, um, a mind reader with emotions at all. You know, I don't think FE DOMs are either, but they certainly are closer to it than I am. (laughs) Right. Um, So it's great real going over all eight of the functions with you. I I felt like I learned a lot about your personality type um, here. And also just about the functions in general, like and how they, how how they work. So this has been really, really fascinating to me. So yeah, um, same here. uh, So Brady, thank you so much for being on my show. Of course, it's a pleasure. I'm really glad that you offered this opportunity for me. And uh, yeah, I hope to have panels and things with you in the future. Yeah, and definitely uh, when Brady has his website out and his book out, I'll be having it down in the description. So be sure to check that out.